Russia announces an end to the first phase of its war in Ukraine, but does that mean a scaling back of its invasion? Well, the Kremlin says the focus now is on controlling the east as fresh images from Mariupol show the devastating damage already done. I can say that that people who attacked the theater, I think that they are not uh, human. They're animals. Tonight's announcement suggests a change of tactics from Vladimir Putin. We'll be live in Kyiv with analysis on what that might mean. Also ahead. President Biden arrives in Poland meeting American troops reinforcing NATO's borders. Good evening. Russia says the first phase of the invasion of Ukraine is over and it's now concentrating on liberating areas in the east of the country. Western officials think this means Russia has now accepted its strategy is failing. Fierce resistance from Ukrainians appears to have pushed Russian forces back from Kyiv and out of artillery range of the capital. But there's a far darker picture for places like Mariupol. New pictures have emerged of the Russian airstrike on a theatre in the city where civilians were seeking shelter. Officials say at least 300 people are now thought to have died. The deadliest known attack on civilians yet, as John Ray reports. The full extent of the tragedy that played out in Mariupol's theatre is still emerging from the ruins. Along with these images released today that show the immediate moments after a missile strike and the shock survivors who'd sought sanctuary, overwhelmingly women and their children, who had trusted their lives to the belief that the Russians would not attack innocent civilians. The city's authorities now say at least 300 died, a grim figure that may well underestimate the true toll. Uh, I can say that, that people who attacked the theater, I think that they're not uh, human, they're animals. Dr. Grankov left friends sheltering in the theater. He escaped with his daughter on the day it was hit. I hope that my friends uh, not die here, not die there, <clears throat> but, um, but I have only my hopes and that's all. Today, there are fires burning at all points of the compass in a city besieged and bombarded for three relentless weeks. But on Russian television, a different version of the same appalling reality. Their troops attend a funeral of a seven-year-old girl killed in what Moscow insists is a liberation that seen 400,000 refugees moved into Russia. Ukraine claims many against their will. This man whose identity we are protecting claims he was taken from Mariupol to a camp deep in Russia. I can't speak freely, but I don't want to be here. I want to get out of this country. Those who defend Mariupol are trapped in an ever smaller stretch of the city, though the Russians do not, it seems, have the port itself. Here, in Ukraine's biggest port city, they watch the fate of Mariupol along the coast with rising apprehension and wonder what might be the Russians' plans for this place. John Ray, ITV News, Odessa. Well, this is how the current situation on the ground looks. Russian forces have barely moved in the past few days with reports Ukraine is regaining towns around Kyiv. Russia says it's now turning attention to controlling Ukraine's Donbass region in the southeast. That includes Mariupol, a site of so much devastation already, as we saw in John's report. Well, our global security editor, Rohit Kachu, is in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, for us tonight. Rohit, does this signal a significant change of strategy from Russia? Yes, it does, uh, Lucrezia, and this was not the strategy that was outlined one uh, month ago. This is all about lowering expectations uh, for the Russian people, and it's been forced by this lack of progress right uh, across the country. We're hearing this evening from the Pentagon uh, that the Russians are no longer in full control of Kherson. Um, and around uh, the city, Kyiv, uh, this evening, what Western officials are indicating uh, is that the Russians are now looking 
looking at pausing their operations so that they can focus on what's happening uh, in Donbass. Uh, some sort of victory there can be an easier sell uh, to the Russian people. And all the while, this investigation uh, into war crimes continues, led by uh, a British prosecutor, a prosecutor at the International Criminal Court. Uh, I just spoke to him this afternoon. He says although he's received help from the Ukrainian side, he has received only silence from the Russians. All right, Rohit in Kyiv, thank you. Well, as Russia reassessed its military operation in Ukraine, US President Joe Biden was just across the border in Poland meeting US troops. It was a message to President Putin that NATO is prepared to defend itself. It was also a show of support to Poland, which has taken in huge numbers of refugees. From Warsaw, Peter Smith reports. Stepping off Air Force One into eastern Poland, President Joe Biden was well within missile range of Putin's occupying army next door. Missiles that have been creeping closer and closer to this NATO territory. He arrives to a Poland that is on edge and increasingly under strain. They've taken in more Ukrainian refugees than the rest of the world combined. This at the border was a short distance from the president today. Now he's pledged America's military support and $1 billion to deal with a humanitarian emergency. It's just devastating to see those little babies, little children, and looking at mothers, you see in their eyes the pain. The, uh, whether it's food or a blanket or cash or the uh, care for medical teams that we send in for our child welfare specialists, they, they need it now. This is the scale of the crisis. Two and a half million refugees are now in Poland. More than one million are children. And in the capital, Warsaw, one in five of the population is now a Ukrainian refugee. The city's mayor shows me another shelter just opening. We are helping as much as we can, but of course our services are also stretched. That's why we need a European and international system which is going to coordinate help. And then, you know, we will persevere. Are you happy with the support you've had? Does it need to be more? We need more. At one refugee centre in Warsaw, we see exactly the pressure this city is under. They're short on food. When a much needed delivery arrives, this is the relief. But their joy is short lived. You've been waiting for this? Uh, yes, uh, this is good, but not enough. It's not enough? Not enough. The volunteers at this refugee centre in Warsaw have been eagerly awaiting this delivery of basic food supplies, but they've also just told me that this will be gone within a day. That is the desperation that President Biden will see from Ukrainian refugees in Poland. Ending the refugee crisis means ending the war, and Poland wants military support for that. President Biden just rejected Poland's plan to get MiG fighter jets into Ukraine, but he did meet some of the 10,000 American troops already stationed here. Poland will ask for that number to be trebled. Let's say we need much more American soldiers here. Everybody who is neighbor of Russia can be vulnerable. Uh, and that's why we need help of Mr. Biden and other our allies from the West. Having rallied his troops, President Biden is now in Warsaw for more crucial talks with Poland's president. This two-day visit is a bold statement of intent. America stands with those who stand up to Russia, but those who live under the shadow of Putin's aggression await to see how the US president's words turn into action. President Joe Biden's also struck a deal with Europe today to increase transatlantic gas supplies. That's to help Europe wean off their dependence on energy with Russia. He's trying to economically strangle Putin out of Ukraine, but he will come under pressure tomorrow from Poland's president to increase his military support here. But President Biden needs to handle this extremely delicately. He is now in NATO's border with Russian conflict, and any unintended escalation could have consequences for the whole world.